you should want to go back you know, the, the Caribbean. And I think hopefully the CTO can set up on the diaspora.org um, a way uh, that the diaspora can tell us in the Caribbean what is available. I mean, you talk about us not giving the jobs, but we don't necessarily know what you're doing, where you are, and who you are. So in terms of creating that database, let's find out who you are, where you are, when you're ready to attend, that we can send that information out to you. If it's possible, you can win that bid. And when it is that you have something to offer back to, the, back to your home, you know, coming back home, it's easy for you to do that. You know, whether you're a dentist, a lawyer, a doctor, you can help us too. Comments and your questions and so on, it's never the end of it. These things don't have instantaneous solutions. We've done uh, town hall meetings, diaspora forums in every borough of this city except Staten Island. And we move a little further every single time. So to answer your question earlier about what's going to happen next, there is such a website under construction now called OneCaribbeanDiaspora.com. That will be the place that's going to take the suggestions, take the, 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 the proposals, take the goods and services as well, take the elements that we know from you and from other areas of the diaspora that are important, and that will be the repository of the information that is useful to you. Secondly, George Ramble's question, how can CTO help? Every time we do one of these, we get some feedback, not always instantly, sometimes within weeks or months, from somebody who heard something that sparked an idea, and it, and it, and it helps us to help you. So it's not really just about, we're always very thankful for our member governments who come and the honorable ministers come and say things and so on, but it's not really always about the governments who must do things. They come and we come so that you can teach us and you can bring the creativity and you can see angles that we can't see. There's that too. Thirdly, or whatever number we're up to, don't forget, that's <laughs> He's allowed to do that, we invited him to do that kind of thing. <laughs> One of the things that we do that we perhaps don't say enough of is that we address the issue that somebody, that Andrea Church addressed. What are we doing about young people? The CTO Foundation has spent over 700,000 US dollars 
in scholarships so that young people who are studying tourism things can give the creativity and the leadership and so on. They're the, I'm not the future, middle-aged man isn't the future of anything. They are! So those are some of the things that we do, and the list, sir, is much more exhaustive, but go to onecaribbeanmedia.com, uh, excuse me, onecaribbeandiaspora.com, which is being developed now, but be, but be sure, be sure, right now, or when you go home, to go to onecaribbean.org. It is really a place to, to see all that CTO is and does and to figure out how it can help you. Don't only wait for a diaspora forum to come to your town, but come to us and see ways that you can help yourself and tell us how we can further the object. Well, you've been a fantastic audience. It's hot. I think it was fantastic. Could you give yourselves a round of applause, please? And, and although we may, we may speak like that, it's only because we're passionate about our countries. No disrespect. Ladies and gentlemen, could you give a warm New York round of applause to our ministers who are here? And also to our panelists. Please. It was a great event. When we started out this forum earlier this year, and I was asked to be a part of this subcommittee, um, one of the big grouses that I have, which many of you shared and, and got the opportunity to express this evening, is the fact that as a part of the diaspora, as a part of the diaspora market, as a part of the diaspora marketing group, a lot of us are here, a lot of talent is here, and we feel dismissed and ignored most of the times. And I know a lot of people share that because we don't see the tax dollars that are being paid, the, the, the remittances that are being sent back, we don't see that spend coming in our community. And I think that is the frustration that you hear uh, from many of us and many of our, our people here this evening. But I think it is the beginning. I, I feel that uh, in, in order to effectuate change, you have to be a part of that mechanism. You can't sit on the periphery and expect change to happen. And that is why I got involved in this subcommittee, because I felt if we can get the people together, and I'm so happy that so many people came out uh, despite the rain. I actually said a very uh, good prayer this morning uh, when I saw the weather that people would show up. And so I think it, is, it, it actually is the beginning of something. I hope that uh, at the end of this, we can actually come up with a consensus that we can actually use to begin planning for next year. So when we come next year, we're not gonna be raising the same issues, but we're gonna actually have solutions, how people can invest, how the media can benefit from part of your budget. Whether it's just a sliver of your budget, I think it still is the beginning of something. So I wanna thank you all, thank the ministers for facing the firing squad uh, this evening. Thank you to the panelists. And most importantly, thank you to my subcommittee members if they can just stand up, acknowledge themselves, because they had to deal with Johnson and I uh, throughout this, this month. So thank you so much for helping us make this a success. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming out. Most of all, thank you to Earl and Claire, who is who's my very good friend and always an incredibly intense, passionate moderator. So thank you, Erwin. Thank you, Johnson, for letting me do this. And thank you, you. And I'm the subcommittee chair of the CTO's Caribbean Diaspora Forum. We just concluded a very good discussion today on the Caribbean Diaspora. And I think what most regional ministers actually got is that the diaspora is very, very insistent that they're focused on and not just simply dismissed and ignored as part of the general population. What a lot of folks feel is that when it comes to tourism dollars and tourism spending, most of the dollars are being spent towards the Caucasian markets. And the ethnic markets continue to be ignored. And that is something that is extremely important to the diaspora. I'm very hopeful that after this forum, tourism ministers will actually get the point to actually just spend a sliver of their budgets with this market and watch the return on investments. We hope that the next year, as we develop this forum, we're going to be able to see results and not just talk and lip service. And that is really what the diaspora is hopeful for.